much, uh, Alicia, and uh, thank you for that uh, lovely introduction. I now need to make sure that I remain very calm during this presentation, and if anything goes wrong with the tech or anything like that, I must just remember to remain calm. Um, so, as Alicia said, I'm Director of Marketing and Admissions for Harrogate Ladies College. Um, I've been in the role for about seven years, but prior to that, I was um, in a corporate um, environment uh, working in marketing for many years. Um, Alicia asked me to talk about the I Am Me campaign um, and really I think the, the journey that we've taken um, in order to, to develop uh, the campaign um, was what I thought might be useful to share with everybody today. So I'll sort of talk you through the journey that, that we've been on um, in terms of developing the I Am Me campaign and I hope that you might find that, find that useful. Um, so just to start with, to give you a little bit of background, um, when we started on this journey, we were in a position where um, our, our visual identity was pretty outdated. Uh, we looked pretty old fashioned, I'd have to say. Um, but, I, but I think it went further than that in that it wasn't just what we looked like um, from a brand uh, visual identity perspective. It was what we were talking about that was very um, indistinct, really. Um, I, I think in reality, if you'd taken the name uh, or our name off the marketing material that we had, um, it could have been any school. There was nothing really that distinct about it. Um, and we, like many of the schools um, on the call and in the room today, um, were and are still operating in a very competitive um, and crowded marketplace. There are some excellent schools that we compete against locally, some of who are here today, um, and not only in the, in the independent sector, we have very strong um, competition um, from state schools that, that we need to work really hard. Um, and we've heard uh, we heard from ISC this morning that if you're in Yorkshire and you're an all girls school, I think you're in about the worst position you can possibly be in. So, so we were facing that as well. Um, and again, we've heard um, this morning that, um, you know, 40%, even if they could afford an independent education, would still not pay for it. So, you know, really challenging position that, um, that, we, that we found ourselves in. Um, so we wanted to do something about it. Um, and the, the main thing that we wanted to do or our focus was that we really wanted to increase our share of the local day market in senior school. Um, and I think that if you're embarking on a journey like, like we were doing, I think it's probably really important to, to have a focus and a really clear um, audience that you're targeting on. Um, we are we are two to eighteen, um, so we have preschool, prep school, senior school. Um, we're day and boarding, so we have national recruitment as well as local recruitment and international recruitment. Um, but I think for us, it was quite important to just focus on on a really specific market. So that for us was the day market um, for senior school. Um, we also wanted to um, uh, aid uh, retention um, and we wanted to have a really consistent um, and positive um, presence in word of mouth. Um, and that comes back to, I think, Lucy's um, survey of what, what was important to people. And one of those things on there was word of mouth. Um, and I don't think that we felt that probably word of mouth in the local market was probably reflective, actually, of who we are. Um, I think we were probably perceived as uh, old fashioned, uh, a bit outdated, and we didn't really feel that that was actually who we were. Um, so what we really wanted to do was we really felt that we wanted to tell our story better. Um, we didn't feel that we were getting across that real essence of who we are to, to our audience. And that, that was really what we wanted to do. We decided to work with an external consultant to help us through the process. Um, and help us along the, the, the way of this journey. Um, I think for us, it was useful to use an external consultant to work with us. Um, I think that um, it was helpful to have someone that helped to guide us through the process and through the journey that we were going on. Um, and also brought um, 
uh, an added level of objectivity that I think for us was quite useful. So someone that didn't have any preconceived um, ideas and, and perceptions of, of maybe where we should do and what we should, what, where we should go and what we should do. Um, but equally, I think that this process that we went through is definitely something that it is very possible to do internally yourself. So, you know, um, if it's not possible to use an external consultant, I would still recommend going through this process if you if you find yourself in the situation that we were. Um, so essentially the process that we went through was we set up a series of focus groups with pupils, with parents and with staff. Um, and we really use those focus groups to try to identify um, uh, what makes us different, but also what makes us special. Um, but the questions that we asked to the people in those focus groups were really focused on, on what's important to them. What do they really value about us? Um, and I think those of the, you who are in the room um, uh, heard uh, Sylvia Brett, our principal, just uh, talk very briefly at the beginning before we started. And she talked about um, uh, being authentic and the, the process that we went through for this was not about um, trying to create something or trying to do something different or trying to be someone different. Um, it was really about articulating who we are better. So it was really about asking those people that have already bought into our school community or already part of it, what they really, really valued about us and what was important to them. So it wasn't about really trying to change who we are. It was just about uh, trying to articulate that better. Um, we gathered together all of the feedback from those focus groups um, and then we arranged those into uh, themes um, and that led to us creating positioning statements so, or a, a, a range of positioning statements. Um, the, the process that we went through was that those, those positioning statements were um, uh, based on um, uh, three, three elements that, that went together to make up that position of statement. So a human truth, a brand truth, and then a universally compelling idea. Uh, this is a process some of you might have come across before, it's used quite strongly in the advertising um, sector. Um, but really it's about, um, again, be it that, that idea of being genuine and, and being um, honest about who you are as a, as a brand, I think. Um, I think we all see through brands that don't really mean anything or, or aren't true to, to who they are. So the idea of this is that you create something, you start with something which is a human truth. So something that everyone agrees on. So something that's so universally true that everyone agrees on it. Combining that with something about us as a school or about the brand, then leading to a statement that is universally compelling. Um, so if I just flick on, this was one of the positioning statements. And I have to say that I Am Me was one of about 12 different positioning statements that we that we had out of this process. Um, so hopefully you can see how that human truth, brand truth, and universally compelling idea sort of evolved for, for the I Am Me message. Um, and but I say this was one of about 12 that different statements at this point in time that, that we were looking at and we were working on. But I say, I think it's all about um, making sure that it's about value, about things that are really important to people, but also about honesty um, as well, I think was, was what was really important to us. We then took those 12 different uh, statements and we went back to the focus groups and we asked them to rank them all in order of how much they resonated with them, um, how much they, they recognised those and how, how important they were to them. Um, that then came back to, um, uh, to us and we looked again. We then had the top three um, out, of those, um, out of those statements. Um, of which I Am Me was one of them. But interestingly, it wasn't the top one, um, but it was the one that we probably felt, um, we felt most passionate about. Um, and importantly, um, our principal felt most passionate about. The, the top three were fairly uh, sort of evenly ranked. So, you know, but actually there was one 
that just stood out from us. And that was the I am me message that we just all felt really passionate about. And um, so that in a sense became our headline, uh, that, that became our top line message. Um, but we then also went back to all of those um, value statements, so all of those uh, positioning statements and used those to create our story. So our story was the longer narrative uh, that we were then going to use uh, below that headline um, of I am me. Um, and so this is just an extract from our story and we wrote it as our story. Um, and I say the wording of all of this, it carries on, this is only the first part of it, um, was based on all of those value statements and, and the things that people told us. Um, so then we had our headline um, and we had a longer narrative. Uh, we did take that back then to the focus groups again, we had more feedback, we talked to them about it, it evolved a little bit as we, as we went along. Um, we did have, uh, uh, we did do quite a, uh, uh, a change. The, the I am me originally started out as uh, something slightly different in the, in the wording, which I'm not going to talk about, but actually we overruled the consultant that we were working with and said, no, we're not, gonna, we're not going to use that. Um, but we then had our headline and we had a slightly longer narrative. Um, and we then began to look at how we could roll that out as a campaign. Uh, the first piece that we did was to uh, work on the prospectus um, and the prospectus, the wording from the prospectus is the wording from our story. So this is the, the wording that runs through it is the wording from our story. So it was it's all based on what people told us was important to them, what they valued about us. Um, it doesn't talk about uh, sports, it doesn't talk about lacrosse, it doesn't talk about art rooms or anything like that. It just talks about um, what people told us was important to them. Um, somebody recently told me that they thought, and I think he meant this in a good way, told me that he thought that our prospectus was like standing naked at the window. I think he meant that it's <laughs> that there's nowhere to hide in that. You know, it's very, it's quite stripped back. It's quite, um, it, it's quite um, sort of to the point. Um, and I say, yeah, I think he meant. I think he meant it in a good way that there's nowhere to hide um, with that. Um, so we started with the prospectus, and we then developed additional campaign material. So we rolled that out across advertising material. Um, it also evolved, um, and we also saw that the pupils themselves, because it had started with them, the message of I am me had kind of started with them. Um, they really embraced it. Um, so the quote here from on what that we have used on some adverts, girls here don't fit the mold, we create it, um, is a quote from one of our former head girls who really just talked about that in one of her speeches. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that I've really, that we've all really kind of liked about the I Am Me campaign is that it came from within. And so it feels like, it feels very genuine. It feels like something that the girls buy into as well and, ha and has evolved it. They've been part of it. So I say that the girl, the, the quote from uh, say former, former head girl, I think just embodies that I am me message um, really, you know, she says it better than, than in a sense than we could. Um, we then rolled it, continued to roll the campaign message out. So things like social media, minibuses, um, merchandise items. Um, and then probably one of the, the, the final pieces that came into that, and we are still evolving things and we are still working on them. Um, but one of the last pieces to come in was a video. And uh, I'll play that. I am authentic. I am myself. Without embarrassment. Without fear. What do I find here? Inspiration. Friendship. Community. Belonging. Learning. Laughing. Exploring. Growing into who I want to be. In a place where I am challenged by others and by myself. Quietly determined to evolve, to understand, 
to take on the world. Your life, I am me. I hope the sound was okay for those um, on uh, watching that via Zoom. I know sometimes that might not come through very well, but but hopefully you can see that the the video message and all of that wording in the in the video and the narrative in the video again all linked back to our story and what people told us was important to them. Um, so we are still continuing to evolve the uh, the I Am Me campaign. We're still continuing to use it. Um, but I think that um, considering from where we've come from due, through, through that journey from to where we are today, I think we absolutely have a much more consistent message across all of our channels. Um, I think that we've uh, increased brand recognition in our local market. Um, Alicia mentioned about, you know, she has recognition of it in the local market. And we do now have, um, parents who inquire, um, prospective families who come to visit, who come to, to see us and say, I've, I've inquired because I, I love your I am me message. And I think that for me is something that, that's really powerful that somebody says, you know, I like that message that I've seen and I want to find out more about it. That, that is fantastic for us. We have also increased pupil engagement in the marketing message, and, and that goes back to what I was just saying earlier about um, the quote from a former pupil, um, that they really do embrace the I am me motto. Um, and I think, again, that's because it comes from what they told us, that, um, that it is part of, of who they think they are as well. Um, I've, I've had... Um, uh, prospective parents who've been to look around who then when they've joined the school have said actually I am me is not just a marketing campaign it's not just a marketing message it is actually something that's really true to you um, and that I think is really powerful um, in terms of um, you know sort of hard bottom uh, bottom line uh, results from the campaign we've seen a 24% increase in day pupils since the start of the campaign and we've increased retention by 14% um, so, you know, Lucy was talking earlier about the lifetime value of pupils. So, you know, in terms of the, our investment in the IME campaign, a 24% increase in day pupils, you can do the maths, it was worth it. Um, we've also um, extended the use of the IME message. And, and I said at the beginning there that actually it was really important for us to focus on one market and to focus on our local day market. Um, but actually, what we've seen is that the I am me message has resonated more widely probably than we thought it would. And actually, we now use it for the prep school, for the preschool, um, and we use it in some international markets as well. Um, and we hadn't really intended to do that. Um, but I think probably that comes back to that um, sense of basing the brand message on something that is, is perceived to be universally true, actually has meant that it's had a wider reach and a wider audience than we than we thought it would do. Um, and yeah, we've, we've used it more, far more widely than, um, than we thought, than, than we ever thought we would do in, in, when, we, when we started to embark on the programme. Um, I hope that that's useful um, just in terms of explaining the journey that, that we went through. Um, I think it is a journey that, you know, is quite, straightforward to, to kind of go go through um, and but I say I think the most important thing is that what we were doing is it wasn't about changing who we are or trying to be someone different um, that wasn't the position that we were in we just wanted to tell our story better um, and I think that hopefully we've done that and we've seen um, positive results from from doing that. 